right, good morning. Nice to see you here. Um, hey, first of all, yeah. that was incredible. Thank you. Uh, that was just... Uh, uh, great selection of songs. And um, if any further proof was needed what a great songwriter David Bowie is, it was displayed right there that uh, yeah. I hope so. you can um, do it with um, three great ukulele players, but the song's just uh, a magic. Thank you, Robert. Um, now, Helen described your musical uh, trajectory and your uh, criticism, your award-winning criticism. What uh, I think possibly less of us here today would know is that you also have some form as a hairstyle and maintenance commentator. <laughs> um, several articles over the years uh, in which you've, you've um, set us straight about how, not only um, how to wear your hair but how to look after it. Mm -hmm. So I, we're going to look a, a little bit of that from, in relation to Bowie as well, I think. A little bit about the maintenance side, which we probably don't hear too much about. In one article in the monthly, you wrote, quote, the king and queen of hair and much more was David Bowie. Bowie was the first rock star truly to understand the importance of hair. <laughs> Can you begin by explaining that assertion and give us some insight into where Bowie's relationship with his hair began? Uh, I think um, that the first thing that, that has to be said about um, Bowie and hair is that he was born with fantastic hair. <laughs> and uh, it's thick, it's luxurious, um, it's pliable, and um, it's something that he was born with. I mean, Bowie's acquired many uh, talents, he's acquired many gifts through his life, but he was born with one, and uh, that is absolutely magnificent hair. And so I think that, that a young David Bowie, when he was... Um, in London in, in 1960, 61, 62, when he was you know, 13, 14, 15 years old, and becoming increasingly um, besotted with music and knowing at that very young age that this was his career. I think two things happened. I, I think, first of all, the people that he looked at as inspiration, Little Richard uh, and Elvis, um, both possessing fantastic hair. And... Uh, uh, I mean, Little Richard is just startling in the, the 50s, and that was Bowie's, one of his um, primary heroes. And so I think Bowie made that connection very early. He would have, and he would have realised also that he had fantastic hair. And so there's the start of his career. Uh, and if you look at um, a, like a very early, um, very well-known photo of Bowie, um, which is him sitting on that drum kit in... Um, He's in a band called the Conrads and he's playing the sax and he's sitting on the drums, which is the first really well-known photo of Bowie. And he's probably only 14 at the time. Um, his hair is just like incredible. And so for a 14-year-old to already be um, manicuring and positioning his hair at that young age uh, is amazing. And so it just shows that, that Bowie right from the beginning uh, had put together hair, his musical heroes, and, and that he knew that this was going to be a vital part of his visual makeup as an artist. Okay, and it was, wasn't long after that that he made his, I think, what was his first public appearance, which was hair related? Yeah. Uh, we'll, we're going to look at that now. Okay, so a couple of things going on there. I mean, one is uh, a part publicity stunt, I would say. Mm. Um, but part incredibly prescient agenda setting, given the role that his hair was yeah. to play. I mean, this is, the, this is the first footage of Bowie. And what's he doing? He's talking about hair, um, which I think is just incredible. Um, and also, he's this whole thing, you know, um, when we walk down the street, people call us darling, and, you know, where's your handbag, you know, dear, is predating his career by about 10 years, because that's what's going to happen in the early 70s, um, where there's lots of photos of Bowie you know, with a man bag, you know. Um, and so he, this is, um, and, and so yeah, so this is him at the start of his musical career and the first thing he's doing is um, talking about hair. 
Well, let's have a look at his first um, first do uh, of any note. What's what's going on with his hair? Okay, um, basically, this is um, this is Dylan influenced. This is um, a man perm from the late '60s, which was quite popular. Um, if you look at photos of the say someone like Eric Clapton at the end of his um, career in Cream. Um, this is Bo this is Dylan, and um, Dylan's 66, and the hairstyle sort of um, filters through the British scene for the next couple of years. If you look at footballers um, in the 70s, they look like this. But as usual, rock is a couple of years ahead of society. Um, but the, 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 the interesting thing about, about Bowie around this time is that if you look at photos of Bowie around 67, 68, is, this is around 69, is that he, um, he had short hair. I mean, that, that's the amazing thing. In, when, when the Beatles were doing um, Sgt. Pepper and, and when long hair really burst out in mainstream society, but especially in rock in the late 60s, Bowie's hair had his hair quite short. Um, Bowie didn't actually go really long, which is going to be the next thing that we see, until um, um, Man Has Sold the World and, and, and particularly Hunky Dory. It's not the, the, the longest Bowie's hair ever gets, really, is 1971. Not the 60s, um, which I find quite interesting. Um, but this is, um, this is a, a classic, uh, this is a Dylan cut. And th there's quite a few photos of, of Bowie. Um, uh, he's also, um, whenever you see photos of him looking like this, uh, he has an acoustic guitar. And Dylan is a huge influence on, on Bowie musically. And so it's no surprising that, that Bowie, as he appropriates people's personas, the Dylan haircut comes in. So, so this is just a quick phase he's going through, but it's caught on this album cover. Okay, we, we're going to have to move along because there's so, so much hair to come through. Uh, Hunky Dory, those of us who were, who were paying attention in 1970 would have seen this do on the original Man Who Sold the World. Yeah. cover, but this was where it uh, was much more widely uh, you, you, you could have picked either two covers. Um, but this is, um, I mean, 7071 is basically hippie Bowie. Um, he's living um, in um, a place called Haddon Hall down in um, South London, and he's basically um, smoking a lot of hash. Uh, he's got a 12-string guitar, and he's got a piano. He's married. Um, and he is, um, this is his hippie face. And um, he's writing between 19, as a hippie songwriter, he's without peer. I mean, his, his songs from 1970 to the, the, um, to the end of 71, when he's writing, he writes The Man Who Sold the World, he writes Hunky Dory, he writes all the songs for Ziggy Stardust in two years, which is just astonishing as a songwriter. Um, but it's basically, his career hasn't taken off, so he's at home. He's married, he has a son. If you see photos of him, he's very much more the feminine presence in the marriage. Um, uh, his, uh, and, and he, the, the, the hair at this time is, um, there's a wonderful photos of him and Haddon Hall, um, beautiful photos of Bowie um, with the long hair. And uh, he's writing long-haired songs, you know, like this is this is beautiful hippie, hippie pop, uh, hippie weirdness, you know, quicksand, Bewley Brothers uh, songs. So, so this is this is the the first real haircut of the '70s, hippie Bowie. And I, I must say, I, I must pre um, say one other thing here, that primarily I see Bowie as a '70s artist. Uh, that's his greatest decade, uh, with no question, as a songwriter, as an actor, uh, as a performer. And so I think, I think um, this is very much to keep in mind, that, that, that we're going to be staying on the 70s, because this is um, Bowie's greatest decade as a musician, but it's also his greatest um, decade uh, with hair as well. Can we just briefly on this do, I'm wondering about maintenance 
Robert. Well, well maintenance, maintenance doesn't really play a part in it, Michael, because... Um, he, he's, in, he's in a group house situation. There's yeah. a lot of bathroom action. Yeah. It's like all of the spiders are queuing up in the morning. Yeah. Is, is he conditioning? Is he, is he just combing? What's going on? I mean, is this, well, I mean, I is mean, this a greasy hair day? With no, 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 no. This, this is the, 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 the thing with, with Bowie is that when you've got hair as luxuriant and as beautiful as that, um, you don't, you're outside the rules. Um, and so basically, um, you could throw any <laughs> into that hair and it's just going to look fantastic. And the, the other thing about Bowie and hair is, there's the hair, but my God, there's the face. And so it's, it's a, just a knockout combination. Um, and so Bowie could really be, his hair in, in he's 24. Um, when you look like that at 24, with that face, you not really don't have to care about hair maintenance all that much. Okay. We better move on. Okay. Um, the Ziggy, look, there's a bit, there's a bit, there's an element of mystery here I like because, I mean, we heard yesterday how, how Bowie appropriated the Ziggy cut from uh, Kansai Yamamoto in, in early January of 72, mm. I think, the, which is the same month this shot was taken. So, this, you know, this is such an iconic cut, but we're seeing it from a distance, yeah. we're intrigued by it, we're not quite sure what it is, is it fully formed yet, what is going on? Well basically, it's the hippie has gone and um, glam rock is on now, it's 72 and so glam is the prevailing uh, musical form in um, the British charts. And so Bowie, but the amazing thing is when, when you look at um, glam acts, and probably the, the most famous one, especially in Australia, or the one that got the most hits, uh, was Sweet. And Sweet were all, were all down to here. Um, if you look at someone like uh, Mark Boland, it's out here. Um, and so this is quite a radical haircut for the time um, with, within Glam, because it's, it's so short. Um, I mean, I, I wasn't in on the discussion yesterday, but... Um, uh, um, uh, an influence also on this haircut and, and someone who claims to have given it to Bowie um, is Mick Ronson's girlfriend. Um, and so down in Haddon Hall, you've got this stewing thing that's just about to boil over. You've got this big, hippie, beautiful, gorgeous house. Bowie's living there um, with, you know, with family and the spies from Mars are, are coming in and out. And so someone like Mick Ronson's girlfriend to to, I think her name's Susie, um, to cut was a part of that hairstyle as well. And so it's Bowie going, the hair's, the, you know, also the songs he's writing, short, sharp, that's what's coming with, with, um, with the Ziggy Stardust songs. And Ziggy Stardust songs were written very much, Hunky Dory was recorded and Bowie told his band, you know, we're going to be back in the studio in three weeks, and the producer to record the songs of Ziggy Stardust. And the, the musical difference between Ziggy Stardust and Hunky Dory is enormous. And Bowie makes that change in about three or four weeks. And so the hair has to go short. New songs, new haircut. And so that's, that's what you're, you're getting there. It's quite unusual. Like that hair for 1972 is quite bold. The only other person that's probably anywhere near him in talent at that time that's got a haircut even vaguely like that is Brian Ferry. He's the other person with short hair, heavily styled in 1972. Um, but Bowie is the leader of the pack. Okay, now, of course, we could dwell on this haircut for a long time. This was the one that essentially carried him through uh, uh, to Aladdin Sane. Yeah. And ups Diamond Dog. So we're going we're gonna to fast forward here. You could, you could, that, that hair there is, is, goes to Aladdin Sane. And really, like the, the cover of Diamond Dogs is that haircut. Um, grown out, you know, so, and that's basically it. For, for, for the next two years, he's living off that haircut. <laughs> so now, what is going on here? Because I mean, this haircut was was shocking to me personally. Yeah, it was to me too. Um, I, I can I can remember seeing that cover. I bought the American um, import cover of that in Brisbane in 1975, and I was shocked. Um, Pleasantly shocked. <laughs> What it is, okay, what it is. Elaborate on. Okay, the, there's a couple of things going on here. Um, this, is, this, is, 
this was appropriated and became known as the Soul Boy haircut. Bowie is now into a whole other style of music. So we get a new haircut. That's the signal. That's always the way with Bowie. Um, and so we've got colouring. So there's a sort of a reddy tinge to it. It's basically um, the Ziggy cut um, reorganised in a way. Um, and it's quite... Um, it's, it's side parted. It's, it's quite... It's no, it was also known as... Like, this is a very influential haircut. It's in, in a way... It's also like it was known as the wedge because it's quite a, a clump of hair coming across here. Um, this is what every hairdresser under the age of 30 looked like in 1975, 76. You could walk into any hairdresser of young men in Melbourne or Sydney or Brisbane or London or wherever. If you walked in, they're all doing this haircut. Before punk, for about a year, 18 months, this was the prevailing hip in a city haircut worn by hairdressers. Um, and it's, again, as I said before, this is the introduction to soul music. So that there's, there's probably also, because Bowie's into um, um, black music and soul music at this time, there may be some sort of um, reference to a soul haircut that was prevalent at the time that I wouldn't know about. There is an Australian journalist, Andrew Muller from Melody Maker, who asserts that this haircut, this haircut alone is responsible for the new romantics. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's what I'm... That, that is... And he'll, he, he'll never forgive David for that. But that oh, no, 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 no. I think this is an amazing haircut. And, and I think also um, that's, that haircut that you're talking about is also associated with the wedge which in a way was also what, I know this is going to sound bizarre, what Princess Di was wearing when she met Charles. It was something like that. That's the second time we've heard a Princess Di comparison, isn't it? Okay, yeah, that's interesting, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, I, I just briefly again on maintenance here. I mean, we're talking a lot, of, a lot of milk, a lot of peppers, a lot of cocaine, a lot of, I mean, I think quite, ha quite hard Los Angeles rainwater. Uh, water. Is this difficult to maintain? Because this is not just a shake it out in the morning kind of thing. Okay, idea. all right. Um, well, basically, Bowie's also got stylists. Um, when, when you're reaching this amount of uh, stardom, you know, you've got people in your life that are looking after you. Um, you've got people that are getting you to the gig. You've got people that are telling you what to do. You've got people that are organising your tours. You've also got professional makeup people and you've got professional hairdressers. Okay. So, so with everything that, that we talk about with Bowie and hair in the 70s, a shadowing presence is um, hairdressers, but Bowie's no fool. I think that Bowie is directing the hair all the time. Um, okay, we're going to delete and, and, and basically, uh, I would say that Bowie is instructing hairdressers all the way through the 70s. All right, the next significant haircut. Mm -hmm. This is one that he, well, he, he received to some extent because it's the one that he... Um, War in the man who fell to earth. Yeah. Um, did he direct this haircut as well? Um, or was this a, a well? This is an interesting stylist? haircut. This is this is interesting because the hair is in a way is this is Bowie. This is low, obviously, and in Berlin. But this is not the look of Bowie in Berlin when he's recording um, low. This is a st this is related to the man who fell to earth, who which is the film that came out. Um, uh, which he was filming before he went to Berlin. Um, and this is a, a Bowie joke. Um, it, it, uh, you know, low profile. You know, like this is... Um, which, you know, he, he does have a love for naff jokes, and this is one of them. Um, but the hair... Look, this is probably my favourite haircut of his. Um, this, this period from... I mean, he's, I can remember being in the cinema and looking at, at The Man Who Fell to Earth in Brisbane when it came out, and I was just looking at his hair for the first 45 minutes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The plot, what was going on, and it's a weird film, just completely... Actually, the whole film, I was just looking at him and just going, Jesus, you look fantastic, um, for the whole of the film. And a lot of it was his hair. Um, I was surprised also that he could act, um, but basically he's been himself... So it's, it's Bowie's best film role by some distance. Um, 
but he's just really being himself. Um, but his hair in it is amazing. Um, and and, and it, this is the, the, the hairstyle, really, that, that comes after uh, Young Americans. And so we've still got the red. Um, but it's been reshaped. And, and, of course, we all know from station to station tour, it's now back. Um, the side part is gone. Um, we're still looking at a magnificent head of hair here. Um, and, and basically, it's a lot you know, closer into the, the, uh, the face, in, into the head. Also, significantly, it's above the ear. Um, and also, of course, you know, Bowie as ever, what's happening you know, in the broader world? Punk. And there's the man. You know, like he's just... He's almost you know, predated it, predicted it. And, um, and, uh, and, you know, like from the man who felt worth to this style... Um, and you see him on, on shows like, you know, he, he does an appearance on the, the Cher show um, from this time. And he just, he's very skinny. He's on coke, um, which in a way, he gets thinner, but his hair gets bigger. No, he gets thinner, his hair remains the same, so it looks bigger. It's an optimal op 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 no, illusion. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's um, the hair comes out because he's... His body's thinner, um, which is an unhealthy way to do that. But um, <laughs> he, yeah, yeah, my favourite haircut of his okay. of all time. I'm going to have to get a time. How are we going for time? What's going on? That sorry, five left. Okay, we better leap forward. Okay, this is, um, you know, in a way, I look at this do and I think momentary lapse of haircut. Like almost as if, I mean, I, you know, we heard a bit yesterday about how we always want to read um, the real David Jones beneath all of the various. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is kind of what I, I kind of feel like, we're, I mean, that's my feeling. What, what's going on for you with this haircut? Um, I like this haircut a lot. To me, this is Bowie. He's in Berlin. He's, he's in his what he what could be called his natural phase. He's he's gone back to Berlin. Um, he's tired of the the artifice and the lifestyle and and, and the um, plastic world of LA. So he goes to Berlin. So what does he do? His hair becomes natural, and so Bowie for the first time, the hair is not playing such an important part, or if it is. He's using it because he's playing it down. In a way, this is very close to his natural hair colour. This is very much, this is the most, uh, um, <coughs> pardon me, this is almost a natural haircut. This is not a hairdresser gone mad. This is, is quite, it's down. If you look at Bowie's clothes at the time, it's the first time that all of the designer stuff goes down and he's trying to, which Bowie does occasionally, he tries to come on as Mr Normal. You know, which he can never do, but he does really badly. But he thinks he's being Joe Blow, and he's not. Do you know what I mean? He's a freak trying to be Joe Blow, and this is what he's doing here. Um, but I find he's. This is. I like this. This is almost a full circle. You know, like this is. This is really Bowie being hair-wise and musically. You know, he's in Berlin. He's living. I've, I've actually stood outside the house that, that, that he lived in in Berlin. It's, you know, he's... And, and this, Bowie talked a lot about this in interviews. You know, I've left the, the trappings of the, the LA lifestyle be behind. I should do it like that. Um, he's, he's left the trappings of the LA lifestyle behind. He's living, you know, hand, you know, a normal life in an apartment in Berlin. And so you've got to also imagine Bowie moving around Berlin on the street, in, in the, the, um, the trains, walking around in bars, that would look like a normal haircut in post-punk Berlin. He would pass as sort of, you almost wouldn't do the second glance. You know, if you saw Bowie in London with Ziggy, wow. If you saw um, him with the Young Americans haircut, Jesus, you know. But that, if you pass that, in a train in Berlin, it wouldn't almost register. And I think that's what Bowie wanted to do. 
Okay, we're going to have to wrap up, but I, I want to fast forward to something I read in one of your hair care columns. Um, in 1987, the year of, of what is widely considered, it's, it's, I would have to say David's most reviled album probably, you walked... And, and his worst hairstyle, go on. You walked into a hairdressing salon, mm -hmm. you sat down and you said <coughs> two words. Blake Carrington. Why did you switch to the Blake Carrington? What was going on for you? And by extension, can we talk about how hair might figure in David's later? Okay. Um, the, the reason I, I wanted to go grey in, in, um, when I was 29 years old, um, two reasons. First of all, I thought the most interesting person culturally that I saw was um, the actor John Forsythe in Dynasty. Uh, I thought he had great hair and I thought he looked magnificent. I thought he was the most adventurous person on the cultural landscape at that time. Um, and secondly, uh, and Bowie's partly to blame here, is that what happened was with Bowie and Jagger and Springsteen and John Fogarty, they all went to the dye bottle, the, the black hair dye bottle, which, you know, McCartney and, and Jagger are still on. And to my way of thinking was that rock and roll was something that... Um, to me, it was like a throwback to the 50s that they were doing this. You know, like they came in the 60s and here, you know, the dye bottle was, you know, black dye was, was being, you know... And I just thought, why can't you age gracefully in rock and roll? Why can't you do that? And if you can't do it, I'll do it. So I'll go grey when I was 29. Um, so I went into a hairdresser in Soho and um, it didn't come out grey. Um, the, the hairdressers there... Um, told me that um, my hair, which was then a very thick um, chestnut brown, would probably not take to grey, that I'd have to go back to blonde, and then they'd try and put a grey into it. It was the longest day in a hairdresser I've ever spent in my life. I was in there for about eight to ten hours. Um, and what happened was that they were right. The grey didn't take. And so I came out blonde. And so I wore my hair blonde for, well, it just grew out. I didn't want to maintain it. Um, so I, um, uh, my hair, but again, <clears throat> maybe a lesson I'd learned from Bowie, music, image, hair. You know, it's, it's a triangle that can never, ever be broken. And everybody in rock and roll is, that is good is working off that. All right. With those words of wisdom, ladies and gentlemen, would you please help me thank Robert Forster. Thank you.